All set? Yep. All right. Good afternoon. Happy uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I think the crises of the last year have only heightened our need to be reflective about the continuing pursuit of justice in our nation. And what he said was, our lives begin to end the day that we become silent about the things that matter. So I'm looking forward to further discussion about the things that matter, which are the continuing to move the arc of the moral universe forward with his continuing inspiration. And that's what he is, is a continuing inspiration to us all. We have some really uh, exciting news about multiple fronts on our efforts to bring vaccinations to everyone in the state of Washington. Today, we are announcing the start of what we think of as the second stage of our vaccination uh, initiative. We are now moving from a limited number of Washingtonians to a rather broad scale where max vaccinations are now possible, called for, and are going to be implemented. Uh, to this end, we have six uh, announcements today to move our vaccination efforts forward in a significant degree, and I'm confident that we will achieve success on this. First, we are announcing that effective immediately, Washington will move statewide to phase 1B of vaccinations. And the first tier of phase 1B is changing so that all Washingtonians who are 65 and older will be eligible to receive vaccines starting immediately. Now, the reason for this is clear. Uh, about 80% of all COVID deaths in the state of Washington have occurred uh, to individuals who are 65 and older. So our vaccine prioritization obviously reflects the need to protect these most vulnerable uh, Washingtonians. Now, in addition to that, Washingtonians age 50 and over who are living in multi-generational households will also be eligible in this tier one of our measures to reflect our desire for equity uh, in our community. Uh, so this is taking place immediately. So people over the age of 65 and those, as I've described, are eligible, are now eligible to, uh, to go get vaccines, and we hope people will. This is going to make uh, it possible for more people in risk categories to access the vaccine now. This also aligns with the latest guidance from the Federal Centers for Disease Control. Prioritize residents whose circumstances would place them in second, third, or fourth tiers in Phase 1B will remain the same. However, we are building in a more flexibility in those subsequent tiers. Once roughly half of the first tier of 1B citizens have received their first doses, we would intend to move to tier two of phase 1B. Once we reach that tier, we will also allow vaccine providers flexibility in administering vaccines to people in tiers uh, two through four. This will make it for an easier process for vaccinating people in congregate settings and in workplaces to make that system more efficient. We're very excited about that progress. This means uh, thousands of more Washingtonians can and will be protected, and we encourage folks to start that today. The second step we're taking is to announce that we have established a statewide goal to make 45,000 vaccinations for COVID every day available to Washingtonians as soon as possible. This goal is higher than our current vaccine allocation by the federal government by several fold. So we are today uh, vaccinating uh, somewhere between 13 and 15,000 people a day. And that exceeds, matches or exceeds the amount of doses that we're receiving from the federal government. But we want to uh, establish an ambitious goal of building capacity to vaccinate 45,000 people. And the reason for this is we always want our capacity for vaccinations to actually get the shot to match or exceed the number of doses we actually are getting from the federal government. So over the next uh, several months, we will be building towards that capacity uh, starting today. Uh, now, we have to realize, I'm sure Washingtonians do, that when in, in establishing this goal of 45,000 potential vaccinations a day, 
to have enough vaccinators and clinics and places to get your vaccination. We can't reach that goal unless we get more doses, obviously, from the federal government. We are advised that those uh, doses will increase over the next several months, and we want to make sure that we have capacity to vaccinate them, uh, folks, in a timely fashion uh, when that increased production occurs. This is an ambitious goal, but I believe uh, the things we're announcing today will put us in good shape moving towards that goal. Third, today we're going to announce we're going to set up mass vaccination sites statewide with additional help from the National Guard and from outside resources as well. The State Department of Health is sending more va volunteer vaccinators to sites where dosages are underutilized and will also be used in these mass vaccination sites. Specifically in this first tier, we are setting up the following sites that will begin vaccine administration starting next week at the Spokane Arena in Spokane, the Benton County Fairgrounds in Kennewick, the Town Toyota Center in Wenatchee, and the Clark County Fairgrounds in Ridgefield. So the state's allocation for doses for next week will be divided between these sites uh, and pharmacies and local clinics to begin 1B vaccinations, as well as existing uh, vaccination uh, large-scale high-throughput sites that are currently under development in Snohomish, King, and Pierce counties. We want to have statewide uh, uh, coverage uh, in this degree, in this uh, respect. The fourth thing we're announcing today is that um, we are establishing a new criteria to ensure that our partners in the health system are administering these vaccines in an appropriate time frame one that appreciates the urgency of this crisis. And I do want to preface talking about this announcement to realize that the state employees are not administering these vaccines. These are partners of the state, hospitals, clinics, uh, uh, tribes that are actually doing the administration. So we have to have cooperation of these entities in order for the vaccine actually to be delivered. Well, starting today, uh, we will have a requirement that 95% of future vaccine allocations are required to be administered in the first week after receipt. And that data must be submitted to the state within 24 hours. And by tomorrow, all vaccine providers in the state are expected to provide daily information on vaccines administered and their plans for using any doses that remain. So every dose allocated prior to this week needs to be administered by January 24th, this Sunday. Uh, there are simply too many people who need access to COVID vaccines for this process to lag uh, any further. And we appreciate, uh, obviously, the help of all of our partners in this effort, but we need to step it up. That game, uh, we need to step up that game significantly. Uh, the fifth step we are taking is that we are launching the Washington State uh, uh, Phase Finder. And um, to determine your eligibility now and going forward, you can go to the State Department of Health website and use their Phase Finder tool to check your eligibility. And the website is doh.wa.gov, doh.wa.gov. And basically, you'll, you'll uh, fill out a form, describe your personal criteria, and that phase finder will advise you what phase you will be in during this prioritization process. Now, for this phase, it's, it, it, it's relatively easy, given the, the criteria I just discussed. But that will help you to make sure that uh, you find yourself in the appropriate phase. The sixth, uh, and you will describe that in the phase finder, they will give you the information as to where the dosages are uh, in your area. So you will know where the doses should be available uh, to be able to find dosages in your area. The sixth thing we are doing is intended to fully mobilize the tremendous resources of the state of Washington in this mission. So we are excited to announce that we are establishing a public-private partnership that the state has developed to accelerate COVID-19 vaccinations. We're calling this the Washington State 
Command and Coordination Center. It will be led by the Department of Health in partnership with business, healthcare, and labor organizations. This team will coordinate all available resources to administer more vaccines in the state of Washington in the fastest and most efficient way possible. I think you'll find out from our speakers today, this is a very talented group. We have enormous resources in our companies and our uh, workers in the state of Washington. And this is designed to bring to bear all of our resources in the state of Washington to get this job done. We'll be enjoyed, uh, uh, joined momentarily by a number of our partners in this effort to speak in their role, in their roles. This is a massive effort, and it takes everybody pulling on the rope to do this, uh, because 2021 is a year to get vaccinated in our state. And we are gonna be mobilizing thousands of workers and resources to save people from this virus. And I'm glad to be able to enter today this second stage of this initiative. So today we're joined um, by some of the first, what may think of charter members of this partnership, Starbucks CEO Kevin Johnson, Microsoft President Brad Smith, Kaiser Permanente of Washington President Susan Mullaney, CMAR Community Health Center's President and CEO Rogelio Rios, and Jane Hopkins, a registered nurse and Executive Vice President for SEIU Healthcare 1199 Northwest. And I'd like to start with some comments about this effort from Jane, if she's here. Is Jane here yet? Jane has technical difficulties. Oh, Jane's having some technical difficulties. We want to thank her leadership. She's been announced to be part of the Biden administration uh, vaccine advisory group. Jane, thanks for your leadership. When you get back on, we'll get you up, up here. So first, first we'd like uh, Kevin Johnson, who helped uh, precipitate this. I appreciate Kevin's leadership from Starbucks of helping us precipitate this idea. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Well, uh, thanks, Governor, and good afternoon. Uh, as Governor Inslee mentioned, as a state and as a nation, building vaccination capacity puts us in a position to play offense with this global pandemic. The governor has set a goal to dramatically scale up capacity, capacity across the state. And we're very fortunate to have many great companies here in the state of Washington. And this is a time for all of us as citizens and as businesses to come together in support of Governor Inslee, Dr. Shaw, and the Department of Health in support of this goal. Now, for the past year, Starbucks has navigated this global pandemic with three simple principles. Prioritize the health and well-being of our Starbucks partners, our employees, and the customers we serve. Number two is to support local health officials as they work to mitigate and contain the spread of this virus. And number three is to show up in a positive and responsible way in every community we serve. Now those principles have served us well. Now we are not a healthcare company, but Starbucks does operate 33,000 stores at scale, serving 100 million customers a week. And we have a world-class team of human-centered design engineers who are working under the direction of the state and healthcare providers like Swedish, Kaiser Permanente and others, with tech companies like Microsoft and many other businesses to help support the creation of vaccination centers that can scale and vaccination centers that amplify the comfort, care and safety of every person who gets vaccinated. Now we're here to support the governor, Dr. Shaw and all of their staffs who are working tirelessly to serve the people of the state of Washington. We believe this is an opportunity to come together, unite around a common goal, and to support our public sector leaders as they work to scale up vaccination capability across the state of Washington. And we're delighted to be here. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, Kevin, for your leadership. I know many people want to see this vaccine in your coffee, but we, got to, we have to have a little different delivery mechanism. But thank you for helping us on this big time. We're very fortunate in this state to have uh, business leaders who recognize this community uh, effort. So thank you very much and all of your associates. We now have Microsoft President uh, Brad Smith. Brad. Uh, well, thank you, Governor, and it's a great pleasure to follow you, Kevin, and I thought you put it really well. So let me be brief. Uh, first of all, um, we believe that the decisions that the governor is announcing today, that Dr. Shaw is pursuing, will accelerate the distribution of vaccines in Washington state. And the focus on setting a bold goal and building distribution capacity ahead of supply is precisely what the people of Washington need. 
Uh, Microsoft, like Starbucks and like Kaiser Permanente, and is really just a small part of a large business community that I think is answering the call to support the state as well as our counties and municipalities across Washington. Um, we're delighted to be a part of this and we're delighted to build on the great collaboration that I think the business community as a whole has brought to bear really since we all had to address COVID last March. Um, certainly technology plays a role in the distribution of vaccines as it basically does in the distribution of everything in the world today. From the phase uh, finder application that people can use to identify whether they're eligible to the technology that goes into finding a location and scheduling an appointment and showing up and having your vaccination records updated. Everything depends to some degree on technology. So as a company, we at Microsoft are completely committed to supporting the governor, supporting the secretary of health and supporting the employees of Washington state to accomplish this goal. Uh, together with others, we have confidence that we can bring vaccines to everyone faster because of this initiative. So thank you for letting us play a part. Brad, are you comfortable talking about some of your efforts on the Microsoft campus that you were talking to me about the other day? Absolutely. In addition to the work that we are doing to provide technology for the state as a whole, uh, we're also mobilizing our campus and our facilities. Uh, as people know, we don't have employees in all of our buildings these days. So we're going to be working with local hospitals uh, so that they can administer their vaccines uh, in a building on our campus. We'll provide support staff uh, to make that possible and to reduce the cost. Uh, the goal is to make this in February one of the mass vaccination sites. This is not going to be a site for Microsoft employees. This is going to be a site for people in the community. And we'll be taking other steps to uh, provide people and financial resources uh, to reduce the costs of these vaccinations and to, in particular, help the state uh, make sure that there's an easy place for people who are uninsured to go. So I think it's one of the types of things you're going to see, not just from Microsoft, but from a whole host of companies in the business community. Thanks for your leadership, Brad, in so many different uh, venues. Uh, we're now going to have Susan uh, Malini from Kaiser Permanente. Before Susan talks, I just want to just briefly talk about the, the reason why we're excited to have private enterprise stepping up the plate on this. And frankly, it's because we've seen the power of private enterprise to be partners with governments. This is what won World War II. Uh, Kaiser Shipyards built the Liberty ships, many in Vancouver, that helped win World War II. It was private companies, actually, who were the arsenals of democracy. And right now, we can help these private companies be the arsenals for this vaccine. And so there's a beautiful symmetry between winning World War II and winning the battle on vaccinations to have Kaiser uh, uh, really helping in this regard. So Susan, uh, could you tell us uh, about your thoughts? Thank you, Governor. Um, it's clear we're at war with COVID. And I just want to start off by saying it is simply remarkable that thanks to the wonders of science and human ingenuity, here we are. And this is what we're talking about, not even a year after COVID hit and made Washington State ground zero. Governor, I want to thank you for your leadership and for pulling us all together to unite as one in this most important mission. As, uh, as Kevin was saying, and, and Brad as well, this is an enormous, enormous undertaking. And what this is going to require is the absolute very best of each one of us individually, of every single organization across the state, and most importantly, the collective, the best collective effort of all of us together, united by Governor Inslee's goal. This is, without a doubt, a team sport. Uh, and Governor, I, what I want to share with everybody today is I am so personally honored to be a part of this. Kaiser Permanente is honored to be a part of this, to be stepping up with you and the rest of the community to help support our public health champions, Dr. Shaw, our labor partners, the entire healthcare community throughout the state, and certainly the business 
community to assist in this critical mission. Kaiser Permanente, what are we giving to this effort? We are, we're gonna give all of you, every single Washingtonian, our very best effort. We have a lot to offer with medical, scientific, and clinical expertise related specifically to COVID-19. We have experience with running mass vaccination clinical operations at scale. We're contributing our knowledge and we're contributing mightily to the planning effort supporting Dr. Shaw and team. And we'll also be loaning leadership to support our public health leaders to make sure that efforts are flawless with distributing vaccine throughout the state of Washington to support Governor Inslee's goal. And so Kaiser Permanente governor is all in. You know, Starbucks, Microsoft, all the members of Challenge Seattle know that this noble mission will undoubtedly save many, many lives throughout the state of Washington. And it's an absolute privilege to be a part of it. And I'll end with this reflection and pick up the thread, Governor, that, that you led with. I think it was brilliant for you to make this announcement today on the day that across this nation, we pause to celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And what I would add to your great remarks is that Dr. King taught us that the impossible is indeed possible, but only through a collective community effort, making sure that no one is left behind and that we're all looking out and taking care of one another. Kaiser Permanente has led from the gecko of this pandemic with our three principles of trust, care, and confidence. We want everybody to have absolute trust we're gonna get this job done. We're gonna do it with great care. And, and collectively, I have a world of confidence we'll be massively successful on this front. And so with that, um, I'll turn it back and say, uh, let's, uh, let's get on with the business of getting our state of Washington vaccinated. Thank you, Governor. Susan, I'm confident you're gonna help us do vaccinations as fast as we turned out Liberty ships in the forest. You bet, so, you absolutely. That is our goal. I am confident we're gonna do this uh, in part because we have so many people participating. We have about 2,400 pharmacies that are now involved in this effort that have signed up through this system. We've already turned on some of our larger pharmacies, Costco and Safeway are having considerable success. So with this number of uh, people coming to, the, to this, pulling on this rope, I am confident we are going to be uh, successful. Uh, with that, we'd like Rogelio Rios of CIMAR Community Health Center to give us uh, thoughts. Rogelio. Uh, thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, CIMAR is delighted uh, to participate in this partnership to increase vaccination rates in the state of Washington. We need to work with all stakeholders to make sure everyone that wants a vaccine gets one as soon as possible. I appreciate very much the governor's effort to put this partnership together. As the governor mentioned, we need a statewide coordinated plan that substantially increases the vaccination rate. To accomplish this objective, we need to work long hours, perhaps seven days a week, to defeat this dreaded disease. Community health centers need to play a vital role uh, on this effort. CMAR Community Health Center's mission is to provide primary, preventive, and supportive health services to the poor, to the uninsured, to the undocumented, and Medicaid patients. In 2019, we served over 300,000 patients in Western Washington and provided over 1.3 million visits. In Washington State, there are 27 community health centers. In 2019, those community health centers served 1.2 million patients at 350 sites. We need to use these health centers to reach the most vulnerable citizens in our state. Essential workers, especially farm workers and people of color, are disproportionately getting sick and dying because they can't work from home. We must get them vaccinated as quickly as possible. Community health centers working with other partners can help us meet this health equity objective. I wanna thank the governor for his leadership. 
and its efforts to vaccinate the citizens of this state. CMAR looks forward to working on this partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate uh, your making healthcare available to folks. Now we have Jean Hopkins of SEIU. Jean, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, good afternoon. I'm Jane Hopkins, and I'm a registered nurse and executive vice president of SCIU 1199. We are representing over 30,000 healthcare workers across Washington State, and um, including nurses, um, respiratory therapists, environmental workers that work on the front line of infection. There is nothing more important to us at our union and other unions and essential workers to, you know, than getting vaccinations right. Our patients need it, our economy needs it, our members and their families need it. We have been working at the state, local and federal level since the start of this pandemic. And we are very excited that Governor Inslee and the partners that you have just heard from today are coming together in a public private partnership to leverage the best expertise available to us. Getting vaccinations out and seeing our state through the end of this pandemic is going to take all of us. And this command team is a model of which we can look to. Washington businesses, labor working together hand in hand for greater good and bringing the best resources to bear. Our members, collective experience, power and voice are key Healthcare workers have been and will keep being there to take care of our community. And serving on this on this command team is one of the ways we can be successful. I know that this is the only way that if we want to get this pandemic behind us, that we need to make sure that we get people vaccinated. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. I'm very happy to serve you. Thank you for your national leadership too. One of Joe Biden's first great picks is to pick you to help the nation develop a new system. And by the way, having a new federal partner who will be honest with us and effective will be of great benefit. So thanks for help leading the nation, Jane. We appreciate that. With that, Thank some, you. some comments by Dr. Thank Shaw. Uh, Dr. Shaw. Thank you, Governor. Thank you to Governor Isley for to you and your team for your both support and your leadership. I also want to thank our partners, uh, Kevin. Susan, Brad, Rogelio, and, and especially Jane being on the front lines. I really appreciate both the partnership and the incredible support that we've received and are going to continue to receive as we move forward. Today, Today is a really important day for the people of Washington. As you know, I am the new Secretary of Health and the values that I bring in are equity, innovation, and engagement. And all three of those values are key to what we're discussing today. The announcements we just heard from Governor Inslee represent the forward progress that we all are looking for to ensure that vaccinations are in the arms of Washingtonians. These are life-saving tools, and we want to get shots in arms, and we want to do this quickly. Today's announcements help us expand beyond our healthcare sector to other Washingtonians. The good news is that as of January 16th, we've given almost 295,000 doses of vaccine. That's 294,386 vaccines in the state of Washington. A total of 696,075 doses of vaccine been delivered to the state of Washington. That means that 42% of our vaccines that have come into our state have now been gotten into the arms of people. And I want to emphasize at least 42% because we know there are some lags before we get the reports from our providers to the state. And that is good news. As you know, we have made progress in those percentages over the last couple of weeks. Last week, and we know this is increasing, we were giving an average of over 14,000 vaccines a day, which is roughly matching the vaccine supply that's coming into our We are exceeding it. As the governor said, sure. Okay, uh, last week, 
we were giving an average of over 14,000 vaccines a day, which roughly matches the amount of vaccines that are coming into the state. But we're also exceeding that, especially of late. That's the good news. But we need to do more. And as governor said, we're focusing on expanding the phases, including today with the announcement of going into 1B1, which now provides more flexibility for providers giving out the vaccine. That means today, our goal is to vaccinate 45,000 people a day. But we do everything we can. We're not waiting, but we're building capacity to be ready to do so regardless. We're having, having some trouble, we think, on our end. Emily, can we do some work on that and come back to the doctor? Or? Doctor, why don't you suspend for a moment? We'll see if we can do some work on our end and come back to you uh, just a little bit later. I have a couple more comments, and let's see if we can get a better connection. So I'm going to ask uh, Emily to work on that. Can you, can you hear me? Well, it's a little better. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. I had to switch over Wi-Fi network. So that's right. that's the technology piece that comes in. There you go. <laughs> um, so it, this requires all of the 45,000 a day vaccination goal is going to require close coordination of all of our state partners, our local partners, including health departments, tribal partners, hospitals, pharmacies, clinics, and certainly those on the ground like Jane who are doing things every single day. Everyone, everyone who works together to make sure that we get this life-saving dose out to all of our Washingtonians. But the other thing that Governor mentioned, which is absolutely critical, is we're also decreasing the age to 65 and older for 1B1. This change also means that we are now going to be able to vaccinate those who are above the age of 65, and we are going to get that started immediately. This aligns with federal governmental announcements with the CDC and others. But our goal is to get through about 50% of this 1B1 phase before we move on to the next years of 1B. And our Department of Health staff will continue to monitor this on a daily basis and will make any adjustments that are necessary in time. So to our vaccine partners on the ground, I want to first say thank you. We want to really support you, the gratitude for everything you're doing. And we want to make sure that you are doing everything you can to vaccinate people eligible for 1B1 as quickly as possible. In addition, we also want to make sure that we are doing everything to give you flexibility for administration of vaccine. So that means that if you've got people that are that once you are finishing that day and you've got a couple of doses left, we do not want you to waste that vaccine. We want you to get that into the arms of Washingtonians. And that is absolutely critical to what we need to do. Yes, we need to go fast, but we also need to make sure we are not wasting any dose anywhere. To our community members, if you are in 1B1, you will begin to hear from your hospital or clinics, from vaccine providers. And if you do not, as the governor mentioned, you can go to FaceFinder on our Washington Department of Health website, and you can make contact with those providers to get yourselves an appointment for vaccination. And if you are not in 1B1, we want you to continue to be patient. We want to do everything we can to vaccinate those who we know are most risk for adverse effects if they were infected with COVID-19, and that is critical. So we're announcing these changes today because we want to get more people vaccinated faster. That's what all of us want, and that's what's necessary to get Washington out of this pandemic safely. So let me say just a couple of other things, which is related to equity. As the governor mentioned, we're also assuring that those who are above the age of 50 in multi-generational households, that they can also be vaccinated in Group 1B1. And that is going to also be on our website. So there is no question with providers. There's no question with our partners. And the public knows that as well. We are not changing that prioritization of people in multi-generational households. We know communities 
that have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19 oftentimes live in multi-generational households. And we also want to make sure that we are reaching them as well as older adults in these communities who are less likely to be reached otherwise. I've already talked about waste, but I want to just make sure everybody recognizes that we have to do everything we can to make sure we are vaccinating as many Washingtonians as possible. A vaccine delivered into the arms of a Washingtonian is better than being left on the shelf, and we all know that. We want our providers to use their common sense as we also want to make sure we are vaccinating those who are the most likely to have an adverse outcome, which is why we have this scheme. Let me close by saying that this state started the COVID-19 fight before anyone in the country. In fact, we're coming up on the one year anniversary in a few days of the first confirmed case of COVID-19 in the United States here in Washington. It has been a long year and everyone is tired of this virus. Everyone is tired of this pandemic, but this virus is not tired of us. We must stay on guard. We must continue to wear our masks, watch our distance, wash our hands, get tested, and the work of our public health and healthcare systems to protect people continues. That our transmission rates and disease spread have been one of the best in the country, but that is a testament to all of our community members. So let me just close by saying thank you. I do want to say that we believe that these six steps that the governor is announcing today will help all of us achieve the goal of getting to 45,000 vaccines daily. daily. However, as Washingtonians, and I'm, guess what, I'm coming new to the state, I will say this, that we are a state that does not just meet our goals, we are a state that exceeds and beats those goals. And so our goal is to get vaccine flowing into our state, into the arms of Washingtonians as quickly as possible. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Governor. Uh, thanks, Dr. Uh, Shaw. Um, uh, just a comment about one of the things Dr. Shaw talked about, our partners. Uh, obviously, to make this happen, we need thousands of partners, from pharmacies to clinics to hospitals to volunteers. We welcome volunteers. We have about 2,300 volunteers to help vaccinate people. We have many people in the National Guard that we're going to put to work. So we need help in our partners, and we appreciate our partners. People in hospitals have been working really hard. And we've been trying to do some things to make it easier for them. We've always already changed a couple of our rules to allow that. And we are asking for them to, uh, to do some difficult work. And we believe we're all capable of doing that if, if we work together. Before I take questions, I just want to make reference to kind of an interesting article I read the other day in the New York Times. They had coverage um, about the pandemic, and they talked about Washington having been the first state, obviously, to be hit by the pan pandemic. It was one year ago this week, actually, that we had the first case. And the article talked uh, about the fact that it's quite clear that Washingtonians have something to be proud of, and that is that we have acted in ways that have saved lives. The Times, New York Times, reported that if every state had approached the crisis the way Washingtonians did, there would be 220,000 people alive today who have lost their lives. 220,000 people. And this is what gives us confidence that we can fairly rapidly increase our vaccination rate because we know how to get things done in the state of Washington. We have saved thousands of people in the state of Washington. If other states in the country had joined us in this effort, there would have been hundreds of thousands of people who had not lost their lives. So that's a sobering thought to think of, but the way I look at it is it ought to give us a full measure of confidence in our ability to have a successful uh, improvement in our vaccination program. Because we are science-based, we are responsible, and we care about each other, and I believe that's what we're going to accomplish. With that, I'm happy to stand for your questions. First question comes from Rachel with According to the latest numbers from the CDC, the states received nearly 700,000 doses, but as Dr. Shaw noted, less than half of those have been administered. So can you speak to some of the specifics on what's caused that backlog and how quickly that could be remedied under some of the changes announced today? 
And then also, Dr. Shaw, can you provide numbers on how many doses have had to be thrown out because they were thawed and not able to be administered? Why don't you answer that one, Umera, then I'll take the first one. Yeah, and we also um, uh, we also had Michelle Roberts on, Governor, so I'm gonna actually ask Michelle to, to weigh in on, the, on that last question. Michelle, are you on? I am on. Um, good afternoon, everybody. We have had very minimal wastage of doses, and that um, data is at the provider level. So we're working on to compile it, but it has been very minimal. So we can we can get a hard number on that. Governor. Yeah. Uh, so listen, the things that we believe uh, need to be done are being done, and so just let me go through this. We believe that we need to expand the universe of Washingtonians that are eligible for the vaccine because we've essentially had sort of a narrow uh, choke in the pipeline in our first few weeks. Now, we, if we can expand this to a larger pool, we believe this is gonna significantly uh, accelerate the, the vaccination rate because more people will be find easier access to the vaccines more people will be willing to take the vaccines. Look, we, you know, this is a voluntary operation, so people need to make a decision to do this. We'll have more people who are eligible to do that, and that will be a significant improvement in our numbers, we believe. Uh, second, we believe that we need to uh, increase the aspirations of our partners. And it's one of the reasons we've established a goal of 45,000 doses a day. Look, we need our partners to recognize that we have to have more capacity or as much capacity as we have doses. Uh, frankly, uh, there may have been kind of an attitude that we'll wait for the doses, then we'll get appointments for people to come in. We need to reverse that. We need our partners to be thinking on the balls of their feet. So they're preparing the logistics to have the vaccine delivered, frankly, even if the doses don't come. So this is a bit of a reversal of a strategy that we're asking our partners to adopt. I had a good discussion with the CEOs of hospitals about this subject yesterday. Third, we believe that we need new, uh, new uh, pipelines of, of delivery systems. Uh, heretofore, we've depended on the medical system to provide the delivery vehicle, but we think given now that we're radically increasing the number of Washingtonians that we wanna serve, we need mass vaccination sites. So we're standing those up quite quickly. We hope to have uh, at least some of those stood up by early next week. And we wanna disperse that around the state of Washington. Uh, Snohomish, King, Pierce have some sort of locally driven mass vaccination sites. We will support those sites, but we wanna make sure we have sites outside of the immediate Puget Sound area. And that's why we located them as we, we talked about. We also need to stand up a new pipeline and delivery system through the pharmacy industry. And I am very excited about this. As I indicated, we now have 2,400 pharmacies that are gonna be in the system as a, essentially a whole new uh, uh, you know, freeway of delivering this vaccine. And we think that that'll be very successful. Next, we needed something to uh, be a little more aspirational for our partners. Um, we've sort of depended on you know, everybody's independent decision-making. Well, that hasn't been good enough. We need a more rapid uh, resourcing of this vaccination of the, of the providers. Look, we've, the state has given them doses. We need them to, to hustle up here. So we have created a legal requirement that they provide these in the, to Washingtonians within a week. And they need, they'll need to hew to that. I believe they can uh, because they do have resources and we've offered volunteers. Like I said, we've got about 2,300 volunteers already who volunteered. We have the National Guard to help. So we just need to pick up the pace and this will now be a legal requirement, uh, a bit of a prod, if you will. Um, I mentioned the phase and, and last, we needed more um, coordination to bring the private sector to the table because we have enormous resources in the private sector. Uh, both in uh, intellectual talent by designing the logistics of these sites, um, high-tech talent to help our improvement of our data systems. We do need some improvement on both ends of our data systems. And that is one of the reasons of our numbers, frankly. I'm convinced we have much more than 42% in people's arms right now. We're just not getting it reported by our providers. 
it's a bit of a clunky system at the moment. We need to make it more efficient. I'm very convinced our numbers will improve, uh, frankly, dramatically once we actually have people on a timely basis uh, reporting their, their vaccination numbers. Uh, we need um, uh, companies uh, like Kaiser who have expertise in the mass vac sites to help. And we need some of the volunteers, their employees as well. So all of those things together will, I believe, dramatically improve uh, the process. And I'm excited about it. I think it's a big leap forward for the state of Washington today. Yes, hi. Um, so you referred to some of the problems that have been happening over the past several weeks uh, in getting vaccines into people's arms. I, I'm unclear on exactly what these partners will be doing to solve those problems. And I wonder if you can give some more specific and concrete examples of what the partners will be doing that will mean that this is gonna go uh, faster and get into more people's arms. Uh, and secondly, we're hearing from a lot of people um, who are very confused about how exactly they can get the vaccine. They've gone to the phase finder, but they don't know who should they call, how can they make an appointment. Um, can you explain that so that people can understand um, how that will happen and also including people at adult family homes who we understand are not getting uh, vaccinated as quickly as they would like? Uh, Umer and, and Dr. Shaw, do you want to answer how to vector people in? Yeah, yeah sure, Governor. So, uh, and thanks for that question. So, as you know, uh, previously um, in, in the previous phase, we were really focusing on healthcare workers and long term care facilities, staff and, and residents, but healthcare workers. So, now as we're expanding into the next phase, um, there, there are a couple of ways. One is that we know that many of our partners and providers have already have plans in place to contact existing patients. So for example, if a hospital system has patients or a clinic has patients, they're already planning on going ahead and making contact with those individuals so that they know that, hey, we've got vaccine, we've got appointments, we wanna get you in. Some of those will be electronic, some of those will be by phone, and it'll probably be a combination of those. Uh, in addition to that, as I mentioned, and of course, uh, Michelle can add to this, but in phase finder, it will show locations on where the vaccine the vaccine has been delivered. And so based on that, the individual can make contact with that provider, whether it's a clinic, a hospital, a pharmacy, and they can call and schedule their appointment. Now, the other thing that I, I did wanna just make a, a quick comment, um, um, Governor, is that we also, in the next 24 to 48 hours, are going to be launching another tool from um, the Department of Health. And, and I really want to thank Microsoft and Brad and his team for this, because again, as, as the governor mentioned, we've got this, this real energy and this high-tech uh, uh, abilities in the state of Washington. And what that, what that tool is going to be is, is it is going to give us, um, it's a dashboard that is going to give people more understanding of both vaccines as a state, how many have come in, how many have been administered, but also by county. And so we're also providing information about how many doses have been administered within counties, and we're planning in time to increase the amount of information that's on that. So again, all of these tools are designed for us to actually have more information, more transparency to the public. We're also working with Microsoft to, to improve some of those systems. And as we improve those systems, we're gonna to continue to roll these out on, on an ongoing basis. And I think that's a critical piece of this. Uh, Michelle, was there anything else that I may have missed? I'll just say that matching vaccine supply to actual people who are eligible has been one of the biggest challenges of um, the beginning of the vaccine campaign. We are working um, to now, and now that we're moving into broader phases, um, phases, put all of that information on our website of where um, where all the vaccine is in our state. So it will be on our website as well as linked in the phase finder tool. Um, local government and local public health also have information um, on all of their websites about locations in their communities. So we're working to make it much easier to find out where do you go to get vaccinated. So bottom line, 
So bottom line, it's on the DOE website website. where the doses are, and people will need to contact those locations. Now, we're also standing up mass vaccination clinics will also be of assistance as well. Our strategy on this is to give uh, citizens multiple systems to use. Rather than just one system, we're using a strategy of using multiple systems, hospitals, clinics, uh, pharmacies, mass vaccination sites, tribal communities. That's the goal, to give people all kinds of different opportunities. Now, for a moment, if I may talk to Washingtonians about some upcoming frustrations that we will experience. We have over a million and a half people, as of this moment, who are eligible for this vaccine. And we are only uh, receiving less than 10% of that in supplies. So there is going to be inevitable frustration that we will have to steel ourselves to as we uh, find out a way to deliver this, these vaccines as much as humanly possible. It is unfortunately reality that there will be times when people will not have dosages available in their community because there isn't enough being delivered to the state of Washington. And the reason I say that is that uh, this is a moment where this is not going to be uh, an expectation of, of an Amazon delivery system. And frankly, we've all got used to Amazon delivering something to us in maximum 48 hours. You're just, you know, there's a, there's a sort of a limited, unlimited number of tennis shoes we can buy, but there's not an unlimited amount of doses we can buy right now. So there will be times when people will call a facility. It'll say on our website that, that we have delivered doses to that hospital, but that hospital may have already made appointments for more people than those doses have been have been uh, available. So, uh, I, you know, I have to be be really forthright with Washingtonians. That patience is going to be one of the most important assets for us in the upcoming weeks and months. But we think this is going to dramatically increase the number of Washingtonians that are receiving uh, this vaccine. <clears throat> So you're setting these requirements for local providers. Will there be some sort of consequence if a provider isn't meeting those legal requirements that you set? And um, Governor, uh, it looks like you will not be eligible. Will you be taking your vaccine? Uh, I will be eligible. I am eligible right now, and I uh, will be doing that in the next several days. I'm, I'm 69, and uh, so Trudy, Trudy and I will be eligible in the next several days. We'll do that. I have total confidence in this vaccine. It has been amazingly effective and amazingly safe. The clinical trials with thousands of people and now the experience we've had, uh, I think is an incredible medical achievement. And I have absolutely no concerns, either myself or the people I hold dearest to my family getting this vaccine. Uh, your first question eluded me for a moment. What was your first question? Governor, it was about um, consequences. Yes, if, uh, consequences. So this is a requirement, and uh, and I'm fully confident that our partners will fulfill this. We are fully confident that they can do this. It might take them reorienting some of their resources to this task, but this is the highest priority. It is a public health crisis, and it calls all of us to prioritize our resources to get this job done. Now, for those who can't, um, you know, they may not receive further vaccines or they might have a more limited vaccine allotment to them, but I don't expect that's going to happen. Our partners are motivated. They just need a, a little more inspiration to get this job done. And we will help them uh, where, where we can to get this job uh, done. And i got to show respect for the people in these hospitals and nurses working real hard now. That's why I hope these volunteers that have volunteered can be of assistance uh, as well. Next question comes from Allison. Governor, this plan at 45,000 a day is very robust. At this point, it looks like the state's getting around 100,000 doses a week. What's it going to take to get more vaccine for our state? Or are we going to have to wait until we see Johnson & Johnson come on board and be approved? AstraZeneca, can we, can we do this? Well, we've talked to Pfizer uh, 
recently, and they have assured us that they have high confidence that uh, every month there will be increased uh, uh, production. And assuming the federal government continues to give us product, uh, I think there is a good reason to believe that the production will increase and that we will receive increased dosages every month, at least for several months. Now, you have to take that with a bit of a grain of salt because uh, we have been unpleasantly surprised. In part, you know, the Trump administration pulled the rug out from under us, told us that they had a second dose in reserve. Turned out there was no such reserve. So that has put a, a kink in our plans. And it's frankly maybe one of the reasons some of our numbers have not as been high, because some people may have been keeping in reserve in part because of this concern. I don't think we're going to see that with the Biden administration. So hopefully that will not be replicated. But in answer to your question, I believe we should have high confidence that the numbers of dosages will increase in the upcoming months. And we want to make sure that we're there with the, uh, the logistical supply to make sure it gets into people's arms. Next question comes from Austin with Northwest Network. By the way, I just, if I can, just for a moment, th this comes back to something I think we need to think about. Some of our providers have been concerned that if they made an appointment for someone and then the dosage didn't get delivered in time, that they would be embarrassed in not having the delivery there in time and that you'd have a citizen that was unhappy with the provider. The situation is we just have to get these appointments made so that we can have the logistics if the dosage arrives. Now, and we're going to have to accept if you make an appointment uh, with your provider and it turns out that the dosage didn't get there in time or uh, they were able to get a few less uh, dosages out of one vial, we're going to have to accept that to some degree in this process. And I believe Washingtonians care enough about each other to understand those frustrations to eventually get everybody vaccinated. Austin. This is important oh. because we want, got to give our providers to move on these appointments and these vaccination schedules. If they're leery of doing that, uh, we won't be able to get this job done. Okay, uh, Austin, go ahead. Governor, Governor the, the question, question I'm, I'm seeing, seeing a lot is why wasn't this plan in place sooner or earlier, given that we knew the vaccine was coming? And I'm also not sure that we heard a response to the question Nina raised about sort of the specific role each of the private partners um, will play. And I'm also still confused about how many doses we are getting per week, which somebody mentioned a number, but if somebody could just remind us. Michelle, about. could you give me the number there per week? Yes, right now we are getting 100,000 first doses of vaccine each week. Right. Um, listen, as far as some of the uh, other efforts, and why don't we have some of our business leaders, partners talk about what they think they can do to help. If They've talked about that a bit, but apparently a questioner wanted more detail. Could you offer some of that? Uh, sure, this is Brad Smith. I'm certainly happy to talk about what we are doing at, at, at Microsoft. I've addressed a little bit of this already. Uh, first, I, I think we're sort of the volunteer uh, technology uh, army at the disposal of Dr. Shaw and Governor Inslee, uh, as well as the, uh, the county and other public health authorities. Um, so you heard uh, Dr. Shaw mention this dashboard that will go live this week. Uh, this is similar to what we at Microsoft have been helping the Department of Health with over the last year. Uh, when you go online and check every day, for example, uh, the latest on uh, yeah, how many cases there are, how many tests, how many hospitalizations, uh, what you're seeing uh, is some technology that the Microsoft AI for Health team uh, has stood up. Uh, but what you can tell from some of the other questions is that basically every step in the distribution process um, does rely on technology. If you want to schedule an appointment, uh, a local hospital has to have uh, a scheduling system. A lot of systems are already in place. So, you know, our first principle is if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. 
Um, we're approaching this not from the standpoint of trying to sell our technology, but to help the state and everybody else put in place all of the technology infrastructure that is needed for this to work. And I would hasten to underscore the challenges that you're seeing in Washington state are being replicated, not just in every state in the country, but frankly, in every country in the world. Uh, you know, so you know, you know, we're working with states and other uh, countries on this, and it's great to you know, help Washington institutions from the state down to, you know, small uh, local clinics, you know, get the best of technology. Uh, the second thing we're doing is, as Governor Inslee alluded to and asking me before, is we're just putting our facilities to work. We're putting our employees to work as volunteers. You know, for every person who is injecting a shot in somebody's arm, uh, you know, there are one and a half or two other people that need to provide support services, data entry, receptionist services, security services, parking help, all these different things. Um, you know, so we're uh, bringing in uh, employees who want to work as volunteers. We have hourly workers we're paying that don't have any work at our campus. Um, so we're putting uh, them to work as well. And I think you can just look at the entire business community. We're at the disposal of the state. Um, we don't want to do something if it's not needed, but if it's needed, we're here to be of help. Kevin, would you like to add anything? Kevin had to jump off. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Do you like anything? Nick, talk. I'm sorry? Nick, talk to us. Nick, Nick, Nick Struley, do you have something to add? Thanks, Governor. I, th I think Brad and the others covered it really well. You know, this is a partnership where we will create a structure to be able to leverage all these resources to make sure that we're solving problems and removing barriers in real time and making sure that we have the most efficient vaccine delivery system uh, in the nation. So it, it really is a, a structure aimed at being able to, to bring all of those resources to bear on vaccination. I asked your uh, third question. Look, we, we just don't have the luxury to drive in the rear view mirror here. I'm, I'm less interested in yesterday and more interested in today, what we can do today, which is we can adopt, we can use principles that we have now learned about what works and implement those in an aggressive and robust way. That's what winning teams do, and that's what we're doing today. We have a very robust goal that is ambitious, but we are an ambitious state. We have a, a strategy to bring in more resources to help in this effort from the private sector. We have a new requirement that our partners help us and, frankly, up their game to some degree to accelerate the process of vaccination. We have a new command uh, structure, if you will, to make sure that decision-making embeds all the things that we have learned. And we've adopted whole new measures and methods of, of actually delivering this product through mass vaccination sites and pharmacies. So we're doing robust things today. That's what we've got to focus on, and I'm excited about it. Uh, hi, Governor. You mentioned some new uh, flexibility and guidance for vaccination groups that would allow those in lower tiers to be vaccinated if half of the current tier is vaccinated. Is that statewide or are local health districts and regions going to be able to kind of move through phases quickly if, like what we're seeing in rural areas, they've vaccinated a lot of the people in the current phase and are kind of just waiting? Um, and then secondly, on these mass vaccination sites, who exactly is eligible to go to them? And I assume that they're also appointment only, so where can folks sign up? Well, everybody who's eligible for any distribution system is also eligible for a max vaccination site. Some of them may be appointment, but some of them may be first come, first serve, and those logistics are being uh, worked out. Uh, Dr. Shah, Michelle, you wanna address the other issue about moving to the next tier? Yeah, Governor, thanks. Um, so so a couple of things. One is that we want to make sure that we recognize that 1A continues as as you know as we are moving into 1B1. So we still have healthcare workers that are also still getting vaccinated. So that that process is going to continue. 1B1, as we um, now start, uh, it is going to take us uh, several weeks. Uh, frankly, we have a lot of people that are in the eligibility of 1B1, and we are going to do everything we can 
to go through those um, those um, vaccinations as quickly as possible. But I think we have to also remind ourselves that that vaccine supply will also be uh, a, a challenge for us. So I don't think we're going to be able to get to that question, even in those rural areas where uh, the, the question was asked, well, are we going to be able to turn around and, and allow those counties or communities to move forward? The answer is right now, we wanna make sure that we continue 1A, we get 1B1 started, and as we move forward, we continue to monitor what is the best approach moving forward as we look at those rural areas vis-a-vis -vis what's happening in some of the larger urban areas. Um, I do wanna say this, uh, Governor, um, while, while we've been on this, and this you know shows the tremendous amount of of, of real interest in, in vaccine, we've had a tremendous amount of traffic on our DOH Department of Health website, as well as on Phase Finder. And so I wanna just also let people know, please be patient. Um, this, uh, you know, this is one of those things where I know people want to immediately start calling their, their provider. They wanna know who that provider is and they wanna start moving that direction. But we want people to recognize that this is going to take time and we wanna make sure there's patience as well from our communities. So I just wanted to make sure to add that as well. But we do believe that we are where our goal at the state is to be as consistent in moving from any of the phases or any of the tiers to future ones uh, but again, we're still, because we're just announcing it today, we're moving in it today, it is gonna be some time before we get anywhere in the state to be moving into potentially that 1B1 to the next tier interface. Yeah, and I just think the best thing we can do for our citizens who are going to you know, want this a lot faster than we're gonna be able to provide it is to just internalize what the situation is so that they know they're being treated fairly. And that as we have over one and a half million people eligible today at this moment, but we're only receiving 100,000 doses a week. And so, you know, that's a challenge. Um, so uh, we've got some work to do uh, in this regard. The flexibility that you referred to, or we referred to, if I can just specify that, We've built into the next tier, not this one, but the next tier when essential workers are eligible. Right now, the, uh, the first cut is for people who are essential workers, grocery store workers, uh, educators and the like, uh, for people who are over 50. But if, people, if, if there's a group going out to vaccinate, say everybody in a grocery store, uh, they're eligible to to vaccinate everyone regardless of their age. So that's the flexibility. And the reason we did that is it's much more efficient so that people don't have to make multiple trips out to the grocery store or school uh, to do vaccinations. Last question, final question comes from Chris with King 5. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, Governor. We uh, we had a newscast during your press your press conference here, so we had to jump in and out of it. So I'm going to ask a, a question that I don't know if it's been asked yet, but uh, is, is there any sort of uh, financial uh, benefit that the state is is offering Costco, Microsoft, Starbucks to participate in this endeavor? Not specifically, uh, providers are paid from insurance carriers for the, the services of vaccination, but there's no other sort of business or financial relationships. Uh, these are leaders who've stepped up to the plate as they have so many times in our community. And that's why we have, one of the reasons we have a great state is we have great companies who do have a community spirit about them and they're stepping up to the plate big time. And I do believe it's gonna help us a lot. So thank them and their employees, because I think their employees uh, can be huge partners in this and volunteers and every other way and getting vaccinated. Look, we need people to get vaccinated. It's really simple. The only way to beat this pandemic is to be vaccinated. And that's an offensive weapon that we ought to be using right now. So I'm looking forward to everybody doing that. We got to attend lots of meetings this weekend, all of which were very enjoyable. Yes, well, what I've said is that Brad and Kevin and Susan or Helio, uh, Jane, you will all get your reward in the afterlife. But you're not yeah. going to make a buck on this. I know that's okay with you. Absolutely. We're doing it to help everybody else, we hope. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I want to thank everybody. I hope they share the excitement of moving forward. And also that, that sense of steely determination to realize we all are in this together. And uh, we're all going to be, uh, I know, as patient as humanly possible and joyous when we get vaccinated. Both of those things are possible in our experience. And we're all going to share them as Washingtonians. Well, good luck. Please be well.